communication about on email. Okay, Hudson. Okay, hi everybody. Um, sorry I can't stay longer. And just to explain, I don't actually live in Birmingham. I actually live in Northampton. But I tend to work out of Birmingham probably four out of five days of the week. And I've got to say, it's an absolutely great city. The more I spend time in Birmingham, the more I want to spend time in Birmingham, the more I get to know the shops and the restaurants. I love Birmingham. I do. I like the city. I love the tram as well. I get off the train, jump off the tram. It's absolutely brilliant. So what I'm going to start by doing is, first of all, say thank you for inviting me. And what I'm going to start by doing is just um, briefly talking about my time of the 22 years this year that I've been in um, Raw Mail and some of the um, things we've had to face with um, government and privatisation. And then I'll just end on the four pillars of campaign, if that's OK. I've made some notes so I don't go warbling off. So I started out... Um, when I was very young, working as a casual, actually, for agencies. So it was one of those where you had to wait for the phone call in the morning to find out if you were going to get work and then be told where you were going to go. Um, one of the worst places I ever worked was doing pizza toppings in a freezer factory and you basically got locked in the storeroom for 12 hours. So when I went into Royal Mail and I started as a casual, I knew what a good place it was to work. I started off as a casual, I worked my way up because then, in, you know, 20 odd years ago, if you knew someone or got, got on well with the gaffer or you knew someone you were a good worker, they tried to bring you through from being just an agency worker, then made you up to part time and then if you were lucky enough, you went to full time. So eventually I became part time and I can honestly say I earned more part time in Royal Mail than I earned full time as an agency worker. And then I became full-time. When I became full-time and part-time within Royal Mail, I picked up a decent pension. 20-odd years ago, I remember joining Royal Mail and saying, better pensions than the police they've got in Royal Mail. I got decent terms and conditions for the first time in my life. I got a decent wage and I got big bonus, a uniform. Never had that before. And I can honestly say, I loved, absolutely loved, and still do to this day, the hustle and bustle of the post office sort and office floor. All the different communities coming together, the laughter, the banter. And I soon became to realise that the reason that that was such a good place to work, because it was a unionised workforce with a good union that fought for everything that we got when we walked through the door. And I never took it for granted because, as I said, I worked for agencies as a casual before I went in there. So, over the years, as I've worked for Royal Mail, I've seen many government decisions that have affected the way our working lives, lives have been. Um, we lost the 350-year monopoly in 2006, which opened up the postal market to competition. But it didn't just open the postal market to competition, it also brought with it a race to the bottom on terms and conditions within the postal market. I'll never forget the day I was in my brother's home in Liverpool and a TNT worker came up his drive to put post through the letterbox. They started in major cities, Manchester, Liverpool. They did try and come into Birmingham, but we headed them off at the pass of some sort. And I'll never forget the day I saw that TNT worker come up my brother's drive to post the mail. My husband's a postal worker. I met him in the Royal Mail as well. And I remember shouting him and saying, David, David, come and look at this. And I was absolutely gutted. And I wasn't gutted because there was a TNT, there was another postal worker, even though TNT, because I've never seen another postal worker other than wearing a Royal Mail uniform. It was the fact that he was a TNT worker, possibly doing the same job as me, but on inferior terms and conditions, and he didn't have what I had. So one of the things I've always tried to fight for, and I know we do as a union as a whole in the CWU, is and we've always said is we were never scared of competition. But if you're going to bring in competition, bring in fair competition for the workers. Bring with it good terms and conditions. So, also before we got privatised in the Royal Mail, you may have noticed that they broke off. They were almost gearing up for privatisation before it even started, way, way, way in the past. And we headed them off at the past a lot of times on privatisation with great public support. But what they did is they split the Royal Mail from the post office. And what you will have seen, and I'm sure all of you will you, you, you'll see this, is what happens in the result of the post office breaking off from the Royal Mail is High Street Post Office, Crown Post Offices have closed. I live in a village in Northampton. My village post office is closed when I, have to, I now have to go six, six, seven miles to pick up the package that the postie can't put through the door. 
um, franchising of post offices where they put them way, way back at the back of WH Smith stores, which they do on purpose. So it's a bit like the kiddie aspect, isn't it? By the time you get all the way down the aisle, if you can get down the aisle, if you're a disabled person, you probably can't get down the aisle because they're so cramped full of stuff. So if you, if you do get to the bottom of the aisle, um, you've probably spent 10 pounds before you've even got to the blinking post office at the bottom. You know what I mean? These are things we've been fighting over and over for. And then what did they do? The ultimate, after years of fighting it off, privatised us. I tell you now, I can honestly say, and I think I speak for a lot of postal workers, I am proud to be a postie. Always have been, always will be. The day I found out that they'd actually gone through the back door and privatised the raw mail, I was angry. Really, really angry. And then I was sad. Do you know why I was sad? Because they'd done it for all the wrong reasons and they'd done it on the cheap. And it was absolutely gutting. And nobody knew that more, that more than anyone than the posties. Since we've been privatised, one of the reasons they said they needed to privatise was because they needed reinvestment to bring money in. Since we've been privatised, they've paid out just under one billion in dividends to shareholders. And fact, more money has gone out of the raw mail than has come in. And now, now we face another challenge, the four pillars of security. The campaign that's exposed raw mail's pre-privatisation agenda. Pay for 2017, initially, they offered us a £250 lump sum pay rise. Just to make a point, before privatisation we always had inflation pay rises and we always had two, three year deals. I think this is the first time in my knowledge that I can recall that they've only just offered, I'll choose my words carefully, crappy. £250 lump sum payment. We, CW, want a decent pay rise which reflects the cost of living. We want an inflation pay rise. And, obviously now we're in 2018, we want a pay rise that's backdated to April 2017. Pensions, some people would lose 30 to 60% of a loss, in the, a loss in their pension promise. One of my friends, he worked out what we would lose in his overall pensions in what they proposed and it was just short of £10,000 he would lose on his pension within those proposals. Legal protections, under the agenda for growth, after privatisation, we got extended legal agreement. Part of that agreement was no compulsory um, redundancies, which we've never had through the CW in Royal Mail, and no zero hour contracts. And also, one of the biggest things that's kept us together is no breakup of the Royal Mail under privatisation, because believe you and me, if we didn't have that agreement, we would now, part of us would have been sold off. Deliveries would be broken up from logistics. There's more money in some than there is in others. And obviously the shareholders want their money. And without that agreement, we would have been broken up. So we want those legal protections extended. And the pipeline, Raw Mail want the cheapest model. They want more time, part-time workers. They want later deliveries. And to be honest, we're not going to accept that. We need to keep our service and we need to keep it running well and we need to keep full-time jobs and we want future growth in our service. So at the moment, no to the pipeline. It threatens jobs and it threatens everything. So after further negotiations, there wasn't much movement to be perfectly honest and the decision was made by our national executives to go for a ballot. 110,000 members were balloted in total just under 16,000 were balloted in the Midlands. And obviously now we had the lovely Draconian Trade Union Act, which we now had to meet a requirement of at least a 50% turnout when we pushed for that ballot. So we knew the work had to be done. We knew the campaign was on. And what a campaign we've run, if I do say so myself. We have a new head of comms in the CW and we changed the way we've ran the campaign completely. We used social media like never, ever before to engage with the workplace. Most people, young, old, have got a phone. We use the phones, we use the social media to engage. Our, um, our negotiators done live Facebook sessions with the membership. Again, never be done, done before where they could ask questions live on social media. Our Twitter groups have doubled. Our Facebook users have tripled. 
We use WhatsApp, if you know that this, on the phones, like never before, where as soon as information came out, it was there, it was put out on WhatsApp by communications from headquarters, and our reps, not just our members, our frontline reps on the floor knew straight away what was going on. So if there was any scaremongering, if there was any untruths, they could be stopped like that straight away. And it made our campaign so much stronger. We did video messages when, you know, they'd come out of negotiations and to make sure that if Royal Mail was spinning another untruth, we were on top of it and making sure we were putting across exactly what was happening. And traditionally, we stayed face to face. We'd done the gate meetings, we'd done the workplace meetings. So I can honestly say, combined with social media and the face to face and the traditional old school style of getting in touch with your members and talking, the campaign was unbelievable. It was absolutely second to none. With politicians, we spoke to politicians, we got public support, and it worked because the result, we smashed it. Absolutely smashed it. And, you know, one of the great things is we got 73.7% turnout, we got an 89.1% yes vote. And when we announced it, because again, you have to make sure there's the stipulations on how you announce it, that you've got to make sure it's gone out to all the members. We've done it live, it was on Sky News, it was everywhere. I think at one point, Royal Mail tried to say that we didn't get it out there enough. I don't think anybody didn't know what that result was. You know, we shouted it from the rooftops. And then, then, when we got our ballot result, and half of our work was done, because let's be honest, the job's never done until the deal's signed and on the table. They took us to the High Court. They, wow. You know, they, they stopped our ballot. But I've got to say, what they thought was going to be an hour in court was five, and we still came out of it, even though they halted the industrial action, we still came out of it with that yes vote. They couldn't take that out of our back pockets. You know, and at the end of the day, we've gone back into talks, and things have moved forward, and you know, We've got the yes agreement, and I'm pleased to say last time we asked for the yes agreement off our members, we didn't need to use it. We still got the deal. And isn't that the ultimate? Isn't that the ultimate? If we get a deal and our members haven't had to lose a day's pay, an hour's yeah. pay, a minute's pay. So yeah, it may have been their little minute of victory. Oh, we've stopped their strike. But victory is still ours to come when we get our deal, and hopefully we haven't lost an hour's money. So, yes. We've now seen progress in the talks. Royal Mail have committed now to work with the union and pension advisors to develop a genuine wage and retirement scheme. And if I'm honest, out of the four, in the four pillars, I always thought the pension was going to be the hardest one for us to, to you know, figure off. But it seems we've worked really well and moved, moved quite considerably on that. Future pensionable pay will cover all basic pay and allowances. That's a big thing. That's a big thing to our members in this union. Revised offer and pay has come through. I'm not quite happy with it yet, but it's moving and that's what matters. Um, and talks are continuing on the pipeline and the legally binding agreement. So the turnaround in the talks has proven that our results, our yes vote, I do think blocked. Royal Mail a little bit and when we went back into the talks with the mediator things changed things massively changed and massively moved on I do believe a deal will be reached I'm in London next Tuesday where we're sitting with the national executive because they've still been talking throughout the Christmas period etc and still talking now even though the official mediation has finished and our ballot is still live so worst case scenario if they don't play ball or backtrack, because there was always that worry after Christmas from some members that it would. Our members are united. Our members know what needs to be done. Our ballot's still live. And we've still got to fight for future jobs and a future service for everybody. And we'll see where we go. But thank you for all your support. Any questions, please, for Kate? Or contributions? Uh, no, questions first, please. Uh, brother? Yeah, um, sounds very interesting. Uh, uh, name, please, and where you work. Adrian Johnson, MUT member. Oh, thank you, Mark. Um, sounds very interesting about the progress being made by that huge um, majority, which sounds like hard work, hard work, using social media, work face to face. 
But interesting to think about there's a £250 pay rise off the threat and we've received the rise, and say the least, and only for one year. Are you hopeful to get in more than a one year agreement uh, sorted with these talks? Would you still like a piecemeal one year arrangement that the manager can offer him? No, we've never done, to be honest, we've never really done one year deals. We've always gone, so 2017 obviously is gone, so anything we get we'll be looking for to backdate till 27, April 2017. We're definitely looking on 28, so we're looking at probably two, three year pay deal altogether, which we've always done. Okay. Any more questions? Stuart? Um, yeah, Stuart Richardson, Birmingham N NEU stroke NUT. Um, to raise some sort of uh, detailed questions, I mean, firstly, how long does the ballot last you know, in terms of being live? Um, secondly, could you say something about what they were definitely proposing on the pension? Was it an ending? Was it was a, a ending of defined benefit going to contribution base, you know, which is like privatised it? Um, and when did the you lose the mon monopoly? Was that under a Labour government or under the present um, Tory government? You know, the, the, I, the monopoly on the um, <coughs> on the postal services. Right, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I believe the ballot is live until June. I'm sure that, I meant to check with someone after before, okay, I'm sure that Royal Mail, because the talks were going so well, that they were, they were quite happy for it to be extended, because that they, that they thought, you know, we were probably going to reach a deal, but I'm sure the ballot is live till June. On the pensions, there was two schemes, so you got some, it depended on how long you've been within the post office. I'm not going to get too into pensions, because I've got to say, it's not completely my forte, it's, you, you either earn... Uh, get with it or you don't to be honest and it can be quite complicated but some members were in the dbc some some members were in the dc scheme the members in the dbc in royal mail were saying they couldn't afford to carry on with that scheme um and they basically the dc scheme again they were shutting it down so basically we put a counter proposal to bring what we didn't want was two tiers because obviously straight away as well what happens is if we go for ballot you're breaking up that membership on who goes what. So we put a, a proposal back in, um, which proposed one scheme for all, which was a wage and retirement scheme. Originally they said that that wasn't doable, but since um, I think they've looked at it and obviously, like I said, bringing in other pension advisors and with further negotiations, they're willing to talk. But I think some of that will involve changing legislation. But obviously I can't go too far into where we are or where we're going because even though some of this is on the table and things have changed, until, as you well know, until it's signed and sealed, it can change again. You know, everything could be off the table mm -hmm. tomorrow. So there's only so much that we're being told and that's going out there, um, but that's sort of on the pensions. And then a monopoly, I believe we lost the monopoly in, oh God, you're testing me now. I did write it down. I'm not sure what government it was actually, but I believe we lost the monopoly in... 2006. 2000, yeah. That was under a Labour government. Yeah. Well, yeah. Not everything's <laughs> rosy, is it? Sometimes. Talk to me, Bear. Mandelson. Was Lord Mandelson? Yeah. Okay. Yes. But uh, just because I think uh, Tony Foley, Birmingham, N E U N U T. Again, I'm sorry to say, but. Uh, no, thanks to, for Kate coming to uh, talk to us and uh, uh, inform us about the uh, situation. But uh, I was intrigued what you said about um, how it was privatised for the wrong reasons. I'm not sure if there are any right reasons for privatisation. <laughs> but uh, I'm also glad as well that you, you're making good use of social media uh, to keep members informed and stuff. You know, I mean, that's what we're aiming to do in the Trades Council. But it's just a plea that if, if in any way that we can help, you know, you should keep us informed in the future of any developments because, you know, whether it's picket lines or whatever, or how we can help, you know, or if you want to address us again, I mean, you know, be, you'd be very welcome because that's what we're all in. We're all in a workers' struggle. Thank you. I mean, just on that comment, I can honestly just come back and say, I mean, when I say thank you for your support, we, we like, bailed off privatisation for years as a union. It was hard for, for campaigns and they weren't run without public support and the help of trades councils and other unions and that's when I always come in to speak I always say thank you because you know it was done through the back door eventually but it was that support that kept us you know going for so long so thank you. Okay. Uh, good question anyone like to make a contribution? No? 
can we then formally thank uh, Kate for the lesson's uh, speech tonight and, uh, and enlightening the audience the way she has been. <laughs>